MTC. EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 1. Dear Library Users. Since the Booktree Library was founded in 2001 as a place for research and study, we have made efforts to meet the users' various needs. Booktree 2001. We are about to modernize our services. We strive to develop electronic library resources, as well as provide remote services to our users. We need to buy more paperback books to sustain a library you can trust. Funds are needed to employ more administrative staff. For 20 years, our dream has been to build the library of everything and make it available to everyone. 2.0 Please help the Booktree Library. Booktree If everyone donates $5, we can end this fundraising campaign successfully. 5. With your donation we can make our dream come true. If you find our library useful, please help us. Thank you. Sincerely, Sarah Lam Library Director. Sarah Lam. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 2. It was July 1985. 19857. Billy gazed up at the enormous building with its nine floors and its thousand windows. Billy 9. It was the big day, a watershed in his life, and he couldn't get his head round it. He'd retired. At last. The enormity of the event began to sink in, and a shiver of joy ran down his spine. He'd left. Actually left. Finally got away from the William Pitt College of Technology. William Pitt. What a nightmare of a job it'd been. Now he was free. No more trying to persuade uncooperative colleagues to take one of his improvement courses, no more having to bow and scrape to bosses who paid lip service to the need for his job. No more having to join the morning rush hour to get to work on time. No more being ruled by the demands of tight timetables and having to jump whenever some superior gave the command. Farewell to all that. Now he knew how a prisoner felt on the day of his release when he heard the gate finally clang behind him. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 3. If you're a young athlete, you, your parents, and your coaches want you to experience success now because you and they believe that early success is highly predictive of later success in your sport. Our athletic culture is obsessed with the phenomenon that can team miss kid, who show earlier dominance in a sport. Yet, although there have been phenoms who went on to great success later in their careers, this perception is as much fantasy as reality. For example, out of the thousands of young baseball players who have competed in the Little League World Series throughout the years, fewer than 50 went on to major league careers. 5-0 In fact, phenoms are a statistical rarity, and those can miss kids often do miss later in their athletic careers. More often than not, it is the athletes who keep at it through setbacks, plateaus and failures who ultimately make it. Your efforts early on as you strive for your sports goals should be devoted to preparing yourself for success in the future, when it matters most, not achieving quick and immediate success. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 4. Why did evolution decide to ban muscle activity during REM sleep? Because by eliminating muscle activity you are prevented from acting out your dream experience. During REM sleep, there is a non-stop barrage of motor commands swirling around the brain, and they underlie the movement-rich experience of dreams. Wise, then, of Mother Nature to have tailored a physiological straitjacket that forbids these fictional movements from becoming reality, especially considering that you've stopped consciously perceiving your surroundings. You can well imagine the disastrous outcome of falsely enacting a dream fight, or a frantic sprint from an approaching dream foe, 
while your eyes are closed and you have no comprehension of the world around you. It wouldn't take long before you quickly left the gene pool. The brain paralyzes the body so the mind can dream safely. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 5 When you and your daughter hear the word volunteering, what's the first image that comes to your mind? Donating your outgrown clothes to the Salvation Army? Maybe you think volunteering means you have to go to Africa and live in a mud hut and eat raw bugs while teaching Sunday school to starving children. Actually, those are ways to volunteer, yet the world of volunteering is much broader than the stereotypical ideas most people have. There are hundreds of ways to volunteer, from collecting newspapers for the Humane Society to playing the guitar at an assisted living center. There's a volunteer possibility just right for your daughter. I have a friend who loves gymnastics, so she volunteers at a local gym and teaches kids to somersault and do cartwheels. That's a long way from eating raw bugs in Africa. She found something that she loved doing and gives her time helping others. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 6 how often do we think about the air we breathe, the water we drink, or the soil our agribusiness conglomerates plant our vegetables in? Not often enough. The typical attitude toward natural resources is often deliberate ignorance. Only when someone must wait in line for hours to fill the car gas tank does gasoline become a concern. Only when people can see and smell the air they breathe and cough when they inhale does air become a visible resource. Water, the universal solvent, causes no concern, and very little thought, until shortages occur, or until it is so foul that nothing can live in it or drink it. Only when we lack water or the quality is poor do we think of water as a resource to worry about. Is soil a resource or is it dirt? Unless you farm, or plant a garden, soil is only dirt. Whether you pay any heed to the soil-slash-dirt debate depends on what you use soil for and on how hungry you are. Slash. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 7. 20 to 30 years is a long time in the annals of information technology long enough to allow us to discern a fundamental rift between the inner workings of yesterday's and today's computational tools. 2030 At the beginning, in the 1990s, we used our brand new digital machines to implement the old science we knew in a sense, we carried all the science we had over to the new computational platforms we were then just discovering. 1990 now, to the contrary, we are learning that computers can work better and faster when we let them follow a different, non-human, post-scientific method, and we increasingly find it easier to let computers solve problems in their own way even when we do not understand what they do or how they do it. In a metaphorical sense, computers are now developing their own science a new kind of science. Thus, just as the digital revolution of the 1990s, new machines, same old science, generated a new way of making, today's computational revolution, same machines, but a brand new science, is generating a new way of thinking. 1990 MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 9 Walter Mischel was born in Vienna in 1930, in a house that was a short walk away from where Sigmund Freud lived. Walter Miskell 1930 His family moved to New York when he was 10 years old to escape from the Nazis. He studied psychology but qualified as a social worker. He suggested that the early link with Freud led him to begin his career as an advocate of Freud and psychoanalysis. However, he found that the psychoanalytic approach was of little help in his work with inner-city aggressive youngsters. This led him to undertake a Ph.D. in psychology at Ohio State University, 
where he worked with George Kelly and Julian Rotter. Ohio, George Kelly Julian Rotter After graduation he worked at Harvard University and then Stanford University before moving to Columbia University in 1984. Harvard Stanford 1984 Columbia while at Harvard he worked on a project assessing performance for the Peace Corps and found that global trait measures of personality were not good predictors of performance. Harvard MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 12 in no way is the use of the word concept intended to suggest that perceiving is an intellectual operation. The processes in question must be thought of as occurring within the visual sector of the nervous system. But the term concept is intended to suggest a striking similarity between the elementary activities of the senses and the higher ones of thinking or reasoning. So great is this similarity that many psychologists attributed the achievements of the senses to secret aid supposedly rendered them by the intellect. Those psychologists spoke of unconscious conclusions or computations because they assumed that perception itself could do no more than mechanically register the impingements of the outer world. It seems now that the same mechanisms operate on both the perceptual and the intellectual level, so that terms like concept, judgment, logic, abstraction, conclusion, computation, are needed in describing the work of the senses. MTC Good job Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 13 One alternative to self-disclosure is to keep your thoughts and feelings to yourself. You can get a sense of how much you rely on silence instead of disclosing by keeping a record of when you do and don't express your opinions. You're likely to find that withholding thoughts and feelings is a common approach for you. Telling the whole truth may be honest, but it can jeopardize you, the other person, and your relationship. Most thoughtful communicators would keep quiet rather than give unwanted opinions like you look awful or you talk too much. Social scientists have found that people often make distinctions between lies of omission and lies of commission and that saying nothing, omission, is usually judged less harshly than telling an outright lie, commission. One study showed that in the workplace, holding back information is often seen as a better alternative than lying or engaging in intentional deception. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 14 Sociologist Irving Goffman notes that when an individual appears before others he will have many motives for trying to control the impression they receive of the situation. Irving Goffman We want to be liked and to have our ideas accepted. We want others to show regard for our feelings and for the values that serve as the anchors for our actions. Goffman reminds us that children, teachers, parents, close friends, employees, employers, spouses, lovers, and co-workers all have strategies for projecting their interests to those with whom they come in contact. Goffman He referred to such strategies as impression management. Since we perform many of these roles simultaneously, we are constantly faced with the imperatives of making our actions and attitudes acceptable to others. Every role we play carries a number of possible strategies for influencing others. In words, gestures, and small signs, we leave a trail of cues that are meant to guide the responses of our audiences. No moment in the routine events of the day is too small to be completely without persuasion. MTC Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 15. Entrepreneurs succeed by providing customers with businesses and services they value. This requires knowledge of what people value and how to provide those goods and services. It is hard to succeed without that knowledge. The person who observes a change in consumption patterns will not necessarily realize its importance unless he or she is familiar with the product or industry. Business people draw on their knowledge acquired from experience to make more accurate assessments of areas of possible demand. 
Part of this involves getting into the heads of the consumers to see how they perceive products in relation to their needs. In so doing, you need to be aware of changes in lifestyles of consumers and their product needs. With this knowledge, you can create a product that connects with the changing lifestyles of the potential market. Firms that put together new combinations of technologies and build products that fit into buyers' thought systems should have greater potential for survival than those that do not. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 16 the mystery of why we are attracted to sad music is a particularly fascinating paradox that has puzzled philosophers for centuries, with very little empirical research on the subject until the last decade. 1-0 Negative emotions such as sadness are generally held to involve avoidance behaviors according to most models of emotion, impelling us to escape from situations or people that make us feel sad, thus protecting us from potential danger. We could expect therefore, that people would usually display a preference for listening to happy music. Research supports this idea, with findings that people do mostly prefer to listen to up-tempo music in major keys, music which is usually perceived as happy. Counterintuitively, however, in the case of music or other aesthetic experiences, the evidence suggests that we also willingly seek out experiences of sadness, even seeming to enjoy them. As David Hume says, they are pleased as they are afflicted, and never so happy as when they employ tears, sobs and cries to give vent to their sorrow. David Hume, dot. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC. EBS, 202, Mini Test 3. Number 17. The form of street art changes to meet the conditions of the political system. In open, pluralistic societies, collectives competing for political space often utilize all forms to record their historical memory. However, in non-competitive, authoritarian systems where government dominates public space, graffiti becomes the primary medium, posters, wall paintings and murals are more risky. Until the twilight of the Augusto Pinochet regime, the painting of murals ceased because of the high political risks. Augusto Pinochet Leaflets supplemented the underground graffiti. At times they were displayed as wall posters. Themes also adapt to reflect pressing national problems. In an authoritarian system, political matters take precedence over social, cultural and economic questions. The opposition's push is to resolve political questions first, their themes record a regime's sins. In a competitive system, once the transition questions are resolved, the street art begins to reflect an array of pressing problems political, social, economic, or cultural in nature. These are recorded in posters, graffiti, wall paintings, and murals. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 18 the American Revolution, 1774-83, ranks among the most written about episodes in history. 1774-83. It achieved independence and forged a great nation. But historians and readers have mostly approached it as an isolated American drama, the decisive formative episode in the history of the nation-state. That it also exerted an immense social, cultural, an ideological impact on the rest of the world that proved fundamental to the shaping of democratic modernity has attracted little attention since the mid-19th century until very recently. 1-9 The American Revolution, preceding the Great French Revolution of 1789-99, was the first and one of the most momentous upheavals of a whole series of revolutionary events gripping the Atlantic world during the three quarters of a century from 1775 to 1848 to 49. 178999, 1775 184849 Like the French Revolution, these were all profoundly affected by, and impacted on, 
America in ways rarely examined and discussed in broad context. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 19 A very few animal species have rudimentary culture. A local troop of Japanese macaques have learned, from the example an innovative female in their midst provided, how to clean sweet potatoes by washing them in water. Equally impressive, members of at least one chimpanzee troop use bush stems stripped of leaves to fish for termite soldiers, the suicidally aggressive insect fighters that bite and hold on to any invader of their nest. Members of a second group of chimpanzees have learned from one another how to swim and dive or otherwise move through water. These are among the very rare examples of true culture's behavior invented by individuals and groups and passed on by the social learning of others. But no animal species, at least none out of the more than one million known, has a language. What then is language what exactly? Linguists define it as the highest form of communication, an endless combination of words translatable into symbols, and arbitrarily chosen to confer meaning. They are used to label any conceivable entity, process, or one or more attributes that define entity and process. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 20 Fear of radiation is problematic considering the trend in radiation exposures. Since 1980, the background radiation exposure level for Americans has doubled, and is likely to continue to climb. 1980 Similar patterns are occurring in all of the developed and developing countries. This increase in background radiation is almost entirely due to the expanding use of radiation procedures in medicine. The benefits of diagnostic radiology in identifying disease and monitoring treatment progress have been significant. However, Radiation has also been overused in many circumstances, conveying little or no benefits to patients while still subjecting them to increased risks. Furthermore, medical radiation is not distributed evenly across the population. While some people are getting no medical radiation exposure at all, others are receiving substantial doses. Under such circumstances, the average background radiation level means little to the individual. People need to be aware of their personal radiation exposures and weigh the risks and benefits before agreeing to subject themselves to medical radiation procedures. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 21 Unlike conventional marketing activities, like advertising and promotions, that are planned and scripted, Sports events are inherently unpredictable. Fans, athletes, teams, and companies do not know outcomes. Despite even the most formidable track records of success, one cannot know for certain whether past sport performances will continue or whether expectations will be turned upside down. This very unpredictability separates sports from almost all other corporate marketing activities. Indeed, Many business managers find this prospect of uncertainty distinctly uncomfortable and consequently shy away from using sports as a marketing platform. Yet sports fans follow sports partly because outcomes are not guaranteed. Fans have an emotional attachment to their favorite teams and athletes, irrespective, mostly, of their recent performances. If sports were scripted then they would lose credibility, spontaneity would be lost and they would be no different than a conventional company-directed ad campaign. MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 22 Formal education has had a major and positive impact on society, but it is also true that not all students meet their learning aspirations. Many children and adults struggle to learn and many are left behind. The problems that undermine their efforts to succeed, and instructors' efforts to help them, arise from numerous sources. A short list includes poor nutrition, poor physical or mental health, a lack of motivation, boredom, 
social and interpersonal problems at school or at home, ineffective approaches to learning, learning disabilities, and poor access to educational resources. Successfully solving these problems will require many solutions and only a subset of them are targeted by cognitive psychologists. This subset of problems is nevertheless fundamental to education and, in general, includes the difficulties that many students have in effectively learning and understanding new ideas and concepts, correcting misconceptions, achieving proficiency in math and reading, and thinking critically. Even in the best of circumstances, many students will still struggle, and many of the efforts of cognitive and educational psychologists are aimed at helping students more effectively learn and teachers more effectively teach. MTC Good job! Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 23 Whereas 19th century dietary reformers worried that we'd stopped baking our own bread, today's food evangelists worry that we've stopped cooking altogether. 1 9. It's true that families eat out more than in the past. And women spend less time cooking than they did a few generations ago. But oversimplified comparisons of today's families with those of previous generations fail to acknowledge the fact that Americans have long depended on the labor of others to get dinner on the table. Poor white women and women of color prepared many people's meals a century ago, just as they do today. The difference is that these women previously worked inside the home, as domestic laborers, rather than in restaurants. At the peak, almost two million domestic workers were employed in American households. 2. Anthropologist Amy Trubeck notes that idealized visions of home cooking persistently neglect the many generations of paid cooks who first worked in homes and then in commercial settings to make these meals possible. Amy Trubeck MTC Good job! Let's start! MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 2425 In an experiment, more than 100 volunteers were shown two photographs, each of a woman's face. 100. After looking at both pictures for a few seconds, they had to choose the one that looked most attractive to them. Immediately after three such choices, subjects were shown again the face they had just chosen and were asked to explain their choice. They readily complied. On three other trials, the experimentalist, in a sleight of hand, exchanged the picture of the chosen woman with the opposite image. That is, immediately after deciding that woman A was more attractive, a double card ploy was used to confront subjects with the picture of woman B and they had to explain why they chose her, the two women depicted on the photos were quite distinct. A, B. Remarkably, most of the time the subjects were fooled. Only in fewer than 25% of trials were participants aware that their original choice was not honored, that they had been fooled. 2 5. Most of the time, they ignored the discrepancy between their original conscious decision and what they were told they had decided. And even more remarkably, they proceeded to justify this choice even though it contradicted what they actually did a few seconds earlier. She's radiant. I would rather have approached her than the other one. I like her earrings, even though the original choice looked solemn and had no earrings. Dot. What choice blindness reveals is that people often have no idea why they choose the way they do. But their urge to explain their actions is such that this does not prevent them from making up a story on the spot, confabulating without knowing it. MTC. Good job. Let's start. MTC EBS, 202, Mini Test 3 Number 2628 It was one of the great moments in Australian sport. You see, when Raylene Boyle won gold in her last race, at the Brisbane Commonwealth Games in 1982 roaring home in the 400 metres the stadium roared even as the nation came to a standstill. Raylene Boyle 1982 Brisbane 400 M Raylene, a beloved figure, who had been denied gold in the previous two Olympics at the hands of East Germans, had at least and at last the perfect finish to her career. Raylene 
and who has been organized to present the medal at such an emotion-charged, proud, national moment? Why, none other than Betty Cuthbert. Betty Cuthbert. Betty, a legend of her own time, had three Olympic gold medals to her credit from a quarter century earlier, before she contracted multiple sclerosis which is why in 1982 she was mostly wheelchair-bound. Betty, 1982. But not for this occasion. No, to give Raylene her medal, Betty is determined to do it on her own two feet, and now, painfully, slowly, makes her way forward unaided right to the dais in the center of the stadium. Raleen Betty As the crowd roars even more, she reaches up with the gold medal to put it around the neck of the crowd's heroine, while the big screen flashes the very words the announcer is intoning to the stadium, Raleen our golden girl. Raleen. But now, as Raleen leans further forward, it brings her mouth close to Betty's ear, enabling her to whisper, don't believe it. There's only one golden girl. And it's you, Betty Cuthbert. Raleen Betty. Betty Cuthbert. Betty's knees tremble with emotion. Betty. And yet, though hands reach out to support her, she waves them away, stands tall for the national anthem, then makes her way, still upright and unaided, 100 meters or more back into the bowels of the stadium using all those qualities of pride, resilience and strength that had made her such a champion all those years ago. 100M Just one step inside the tunnel, however, the instant she is out of public view, she collapses into the arms of officials. There is a flood of tears, of pain from the multiple sclerosis and sheer emotion. It takes a while but after she sobs out the story of what Raylene had said to her on the dais, everyone within earshot is crying too. Raylene. MTC. Good job.